have a word from the Lord that I have tried to not give. Amen. I have tried not to give this word. I have tried to give you something else. I've tried to go around this word. And we're going to celebrate the Lord's table after the word. And uh, you heard the reading of the text. And I'm going to deviate just a little bit and go back to our reading of December the 31st. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number three is where we will find the lesson for today. Take up your Bibles and repeat after me. This is my Bible. <clears throat> Try it one more time. This is my Bible. I think I heard you that time. And I believe what it says. <clears throat> it is God's word to me. And I believe what it says. Who it says I am, that's who I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. It's a supernatural word from supernatural God to me, a supernatural being. And I believe what it says. I believe what it says. I am the righteousness of God and I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me because that's what it says. Hallelujah. So today I'm ready to receive from the word of God. Hallelujah. I shall with my heart believe because I have to believe with my heart. And where I have need of change, I'm ready to be changed by the living, breathing, immutable, supernatural word of Almighty God. And I'll never be the same again after I have heard, after I received, after I believed, and after I've applied the word I hear today in Jesus' name, amen. Keep giving, keep sowing, keep putting your offerings in. We thank the Lord for you. Ecclesiastes 3 is where we are going to go. And we just thank God for the hot tea this morning. Hallelujah. Thank God for our staff uh, that is here. And for those of you that are joining us uh, that are not a part directly of our church, we're glad to have you. Please like, tag, and share. For everything, verse 1, there is a season and a time for every matter under the heaven. <clears throat> a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal. Wow. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. Wow. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of the past and the future into their minds. Yet... They cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. 
I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that we should eat and drink and take pleasure in all of our toil. You see that in your word? Jump over, if you would, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number two, the Gospel of Luke. I love Luke's Gospel, the physician. Luke chapter number two. And when you get there, say, I'm on my way. I'm not there yet. And if you're there, say, I'm there. Hallelujah. Well, listen to this. And Jesus, verse 52, all the way over to the end. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Now we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to really help us to walk this out for the rest of January uh, because this will be where we kind of land for all of the year. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, I, I've been <clears throat> kind of toiling in this text for the last few days now, with the Ecclesiastes text, in terms of everything having a season and everything having a time. Some of you have been listening to me a little bit, and you've heard me kind of identify verse 6, the B part of that verse, a time to keep and a time to throw away. And, you know, those of us who are preachers, we understand that sometimes you can read a text and then maybe a million times, and then one time it just lightens up, like all of a sudden the Holy Spirit put it there. But what I've learned after 46 years of preaching is that when the Holy Spirit does that, he has something to say about that. So if you would underline that in your Bible, a time to keep and a time to throw away. Notice, uh, notice that uh, on each of these uh, verses, there are the uh, extremes on either end. So a time to be born, and then there's a time to die time to plant and a time to harvest what you've planted. So you see that uh, he doesn't give us what's in the middle. He gives us what's on either end. And sometimes if you're not careful, you can end up on one end too long. So I don't want to talk about what's on either end. I want to talk about what's in the middle. I want to talk about what's in the middle. So a time to be born and a time to die. What's in the middle of that? Life. Life. That's what's in the middle of that. And so I want us to think about the middle. Somebody say middle. Somebody type that into the chat. Middle. 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 And that's where I perceive Holy Spirit is going to have us examine ourselves through the lenses of what's in the middle. And for just a landing spot, let me just kind of ground us here in this space of pursuing a balanced life. Pursuing a balanced life. All right, somebody repeat that. Write it down. Pursuing a balanced life. Not what's on either end, but what's in the middle. <clears throat> what's in the middle what's in the middle and I, I was reading something about that and Socrates has something that he said a long time ago an unexamined life is not worth living <laughs> an unexamined life is not worth living and so we're going to do some examinations during this first month of the year. I, I don't know if you're fasting or what the Spirit of the Lord has laid upon your heart, but he's laid a little fast on my heart and just my own personal consecration because I want to examine me. 
I want to examine me. Am I operating at peak performance? Mm. Am I up? Am I? Am I operating? Many times we want the public life to be seen while the private life sometimes is in shambles. Am I operating at my peak performance? It's quiet in this church. I, I, I need those of you online to shout a little bit louder because those that are here in the sanctuary have suddenly gone mute. <laughs> Am I optimizing my talents? Am I optimizing my time? Am I optimizing my intellect? Ooh, this is good. Wait a minute, I can't, I can't be shouting on my own stuff here. Hold on. <laughs> wait a minute, I, wait, I done got taken away. Hold on. Because these are questions that you, 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 you don't want maybe in church. You know, if you got a coach or you want a, you know, a business coach or you got, you know, different, you know, coaches, you, you, you have these kinds of conversations. But we don't have sometimes these conversations across the sacred desk which is unfortunate because it forces us sometimes to live unauthentic. Am I operating at my peak performance? Am I optimizing my talents? Am I optimizing my time? Am I optimizing, here's one, my intellect? And what, I, what I've been looking at, particularly as we take this inventory, as we take an honest inventory, based on Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 13, we got to find out, am I caught on either end or am I really living in the middle? Am I really living in the balance? Have I encountered a trauma or some tragedy or some unexpected mishap or guilt or regret? A am I stuck on either end of the spectrum? Or am I living in the middle? Hallelujah. Halle hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Now, when you begin to look at the text and you begin to look at, uh, I believe what the Solomon is saying to us is that God has a season and a time for every matter under the heaven. There's a season for sorrow, but then there's a season for joy. And so sometimes, depending upon, uh, you know, our, how we're socialized, depending upon our, inter, our intelligence or our logic or our spirituality, sometimes we can get stuck. Sometimes we can get caught. Sometimes we can, we cannot necessarily be living at our, our, our optimum best. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, ask the question. And he asked me, are you living at your peak performance? Am I living at my peak performance or am I too far on either end of the spectrum where I'm not really living in the middle. I'm not really living in the balance. The scripture says, Luke chapter 2, that Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and favor with God. Mark those three things. Listen to the balance. Wisdom, stature, and favor with God. That he didn't just uh, uh, increase in his spirituality. He didn't just increase in his favor with God, but he increased intellectually. He increased in wisdom. He increased in stature, and he increased in favor with God. If you read that text, you know that that's the text of Jesus at 12 when he leaves the temple after his parents found him, relocated him, 
and he was up preaching and he was doing some mighty things and people were really amazed that this little 12 year old boy who had just by misfit was able to recite the Torah as he was to recite the, the, the Torah and to have such power and such information but yet he was out of balance because he was only 12 he was only 12 he was out of balance I want us to move beyond right and wrong can, can we do that for just a minute uh, uh, because sometimes sometime we think everything is right or wrong but I want to ask you are you in balance are you living in the balance are you pursuing a balanced life oh hallelujah yeah you you you're young and you're 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 you got a great calling jesus and yes you have an assignment on your life but the text luke is very clear i love luke because he says the boy jesus so even with all that he knew come on now it would have been wrong for for us to ordain him and send him on a ministry because it would have taken him out of balance. And the Bible says that after his parents relocated him, that now Jesus went down with them. But while he went down, he increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God. Who am I talking to today? Who am I talking to today that needs to increase in one or all of these areas because here's what we do many times we focus on one part of our lives we focus on one part and when you focus on that one part many times the other parts of your life can get out of balance I've seen this happen so much with people who are consumed with ministry they focus on ministry. They're consumed with ministry. They want to be in ministry at any cost. But the rest of their lives is in shambles. Am I talking to anybody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if any one part of your life becomes all important, then everything, including that part, will crumble. Oh, you need to hear what I just said. I said, if any one part of your life becomes all important or all consuming, then everything, including that part, will crumble. Because you're out of balance. You're out of balance. And we, this year, we're going to pursue the balance. We're going to pursue not just the balance, but we're going to pursue, pursue a balanced life. You say, why, why, why would God give you that word in the midst of pandemic? I don't know. You can inquire of the Lord. <laughs> but obviously, he wants us to see that very possibly with everything that's been going on, you were out of balance before the pandemic. That the, that, that, that the pandemic has simply accentuated Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So, so even in the midst of a pandemic, uh, the Holy Ghost is saying, uh, I want you to pursue the middle, to pursue the balanced life, even in the midst of a pandemic. I want you to look back at this Luke 2 a passage. Jesus increased. Look at this. Jesus, that, that, those two words, Jesus increase, you wouldn't necessarily put them together in the same sentence. But Jesus had to increase. He was born of a virgin. He was conceived of the Holy Ghost. He had assignment and purpose in his life. But the Bible says that Jesus increased. That Jesus increased. Glory to God. He increased in what? He increased in wisdom. Now that area has to do with our intellect. So Jesus, watch this, increased intellectually. 
Listen to this. That Jesus increased in stature. So physically he was fit. That he increased in his stature. In his physical and in his emotional stature. He didn't just increase in favor with God. He didn't just develop spiritually, but he increased. Somebody's going to help me. He increased intellectually. He increased physically and emotionally, and he increased spiritually. Why? Because God wants all of us to operate at peak performance. Somebody say that with me. God wants me to operate at peak performance. And if I'm not operating at peak performance, that means that there's some imbalance someplace. There's an area that I'm not focusing on. There's an area that I'm not paying attention to. There's an area that I don't think I need to develop. And we sometimes are so spiritual that all we want to focus on is our spirituality. But what about our mentality? What, what about those other areas in our life that sometimes go lacking because we think that everything is spiritual? There's a time to be spiritual, but there's a time to be natural. There's a time to be natural. I'm going to say that again. There's a time to be natural. There's a time to sit and drink and be happy. There's a time to go roller skating. There's a time to go out for dinner. There's a time to go to the movie. There's a time to go ballroom dancing. There's a time. But then there's a time to fast and pray and stay in your closet and turn your plate over. Are you, do you, can you, will you discern the difference? Can you see the balance? There's a time to spend, but then there's a time to save. God, I'm preaching. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. I'm going to need y'all out there to shout loud because but give me some hearts or something. Uh, put, put something in the chat if I'm doing all right. Uh, if I'm doing all right, write down, Bishop, you're doing all right. Uh, because I got people that's sitting in here with me and they ain't doing, they don't think I'm doing that good. I don't know. But uh, because I can't see you, would you help me out uh, and give me some stars and put on that, Bishop, you're doing all right. Somebody put it on the screen. You're doing all right, Bishop. You're doing all right. Woo, hallelujah. Now, what happens when I'm not operating in the balance? I'm just giving you an overview because we're going to cover this in January. What, what happens when I do not uh, operate in the balance? Two things happen. Number one, frustration. Frustration. Frustration, frustration occurs. Frustration happens as a result of imbalance in your life. Frustration. You're easily offended. You're frustrated. You get overwhelmed. You get too tired. You feel like, okay, I, uh, I feel like I need a, a something, a shot, a drink, a, a hit, a, a, a drag, or something. For frustration, you don't want to be with nobody. You can't. You isolate. You can't integrate. You can't collaborate. You're frustrated. You're frustrated. And many times, uh, people will make that a mental disorder. But really what it is, is a balance issue. It's a balance issue. It's a balance issue. You're not balancing your time. You're not balancing your resources. Woo, poverty, come on, somebody. You're not, ba you're not balancing. You're not balancing. You're frustrated. You see the bills. You see everything that's going on. Something about your balance is off. You're not managing your time or you're not balancing your resources or you're not balancing your appetites. You're not managing your thought life. Something is out of balance. And that's what triggers frustration. And then the second thing that happens when you're not in balance is fatigue. Come on now, fatigue. I, I made a decision and I, I, I'm praying now that, you know, sometimes I, I feel guilty when you're an overachiever. I'm an overachiever. I admit it. I need, you know, I get deliverance every, every morning. Praise God, because, you know, I can overachieve, and I can make other people around me overachieve. I recognize that. 
And so when I'm not overachieving, I feel guilty. When I'm not doing something, I feel guilty. I don't feel like I, I, I should be resting all the time or sitting still. You know, y'all don't understand. And, and, and I'm just talking to you about myself. You know, you, you can say amen when I'm talking about myself. Now, you might not can say amen when I start talking about you. <laughs> but I am an overachiever. I recognize that. And, 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 I, and I realize that, that, that fatigue, sometimes I ignore. I, I, I can push past it because I got to finish. I got so much to do. And so many times I get fatigued, but I override it. But how, yes, and I get it done. I get everything done that I need to get done, but there's a time to work. And there's a time to rest. It's amazing how all of these things are of God. So both born and die is God. Both plant and pluck up is God. Both kill and heal is God. Both break down and build up is God. Both weep and laugh is God. Both mourn and dance is God. Ain't nobody going to like me. Both throwing stones and gathering stones. They're both God. Both embracing and not embracing. Both God. Both to seek and to lose is both God. To keep and throw away is both God. To tear and to sow is both God. Come on now. To keep uh, silence and then to yell is both God. To love and to hate is both God. War and peace is both God. And our perception of God is not balanced. Because we think that only the things on the right are God. And then the left can't be God. So, so we mourn too long, we, we weep too long, we kill too long, we break down too long. Come on now. Because, because we, we, don't, we don't know. We don't know balance. We don't know balance. And we don't know God that well either. They're both God. And that's what we have to understand is both God. Life and death is both God. Love and hate is both God. Whoa, come on here. Planting and reaping are both God. Because the Bible says that in everything, there is a season and a time under heaven. And it is God that does it. It's God that establishes it. It's God. So for me to rest is God. For me to work is God. However, fatigue is not God. Frustration is not God. And so I need to pay attention to these triggers, fatigue and frustration, to let me know that I'm out of God. I'm out of God. I'm out of God. I'm out of God. I'm out of, I, I'm out of balance. Because if I wasn't out of balance, I wouldn't be fatigued or frustrated. I told my daughters the other night, we had a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner there at my baby's house. And isn't that beautiful? I can go to my children's homes. Ain't that a blessing? Ain't that a blessed? I'm a blessed woman of God. I can go around the corner to one and come back around the corner to the other. Praise God. When the spring come, I'm going to walk them. I ain't going to ride. I'm going to walk it. Because I want to stay in balance. And I was just saying, I was just saying to them that one day I just slept all day. Boy, oh boy. And uh, I got off of the Pentecost in a pandemic and I went through my ritual of prayer and thanking God and reading through the chats and praying over the people. And I'm always grateful for all two or 3,000 of you that come every morning. Thank you so much. And... I got up and I was like, wow, I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. My mind said, but you got so much to do. I'm sleepy. And I text the kids and I said, oh, I'm so sleepy. And one of them, I'm not going to call no names, but the initial is S-H. 
<laughs> Who am I to expose Shannon? And, and then the other one, A-H, she just thinks whatever S-H say, she should repeat it. And so <laughs> in the message it said, well, go to sleep. It's the middle of the day. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. That's right. That's what I said. Go to sleep. And I said, go to sleep. What a novel idea. And so what I did, I took off my clothes. Come on now. And, 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 and took off my full makeup. Yes. And, 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 and got in my pajamas. At 10 in the morning, surely I'm going to hell. Surely the Lord is about to come. <laughs> and they bought me a blanket and, and covers for Christmas. And I got under the, on the cover on the, on the sofa and I slept all day. I woke up and went back to sleep. I woke up and went back to sleep. I woke up and went back to sleep. I woke up about 11 at night, got up, took a shower, and went back to bed. Y'all not saying nothing. Because I want a balanced life. I want a balanced life. I want a balanced life, folks. I want a balanced life. I want to increase intellectually. I want to increase physically. I want to increase spiritually. I was able to finish my book. On the 30th of December, I was able, I sent it back to the publisher for, with edits and it, it had been sitting in my email and I hadn't got to it because I was busy with some other stuff. And I said, I will not let this year catch me, this new year, and I have not finished this book. And I sent it to the, back to the publisher with all the edits done and then he sent me the back cover and I got it done and I, I felt so good and I said self you got three more books to write you may not need to go to school this semester and, 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 and listen this is how I know how we feel about uh, uh, not letting things go how guilty we feel sometimes when we choose something else and let something else rest and I said well I'm gonna get this doctorate eventually anyway but I got to get these books out so what if I took the next eight weeks and just wrote just wrote and finished my books come on now you follow what I'm saying Be because I, 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 I understand that the degree is over there but I can't do both. Are you listening to me? Because balance is always a choice. Balance is always a choice. You got to choose between one or the other. Because not always are you able, not if you are operate at peak performance. And then I'm getting up every morning at 4.30. And then I'm doing what I have to do. I have to study. I don't just get up and start shooting from the hip. Lord, I'm not going to go to school this semester I'm going to let these eight weeks go by me and I'm going to finish these books. See, those are the hard decisions that you have to make if you're pursuing the balance. Now, this is what the enemy will do. The enemy will drive you into a space of guilt. Am I talking to anybody? Am I talking to anybody? Hallelujah. Uh, because I chose to write my books and not go to school. How many of you know that the school will be there the next eight weeks after the first eight weeks? How many of you understand that? Jesus increased in wisdom. Jesus increased in stature. Some of you right now have unfinished degrees that you need to finish. You started it, but you haven't finished it because you're out of balance. You're out of balance. You got some areas where you're focusing and other areas that you're neglecting. Somebody say areas of focus and areas of neglect. Say it again, areas of focus and areas of neglect. And so in you, anytime you have areas of neglect, you're not going to operate at peak performance. 
Oh, hallelujah. May I give you five areas that we will look at this month in terms of balance. The first area is mental. Mental, am I mentally optimizing? The second area, physically. Physically, am I physically at my best? Do I have aches and pains that I need to look at? Do I, do, do I need a physical? When was my last physical? When was my last mis, uh, 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 breast exam? My last uh, colonoscopy? My last dental exam? I, come on, y'all not saying nothing. I know you paid $200 for eyebrows and you paid $150 for eyelashes. But when, come on now. But when was your last mammogram? Am I talking to anybody up in here? I know, I know, I know, I know. Love me got you two or three times. You got two or three lace fronts. Uh -huh, I know. I, I I get it. But when was your last pap smear? Whew, it's quiet in this joint. It's quiet. It's quiet. And it, it's quiet. It's quiet. It's quiet. Well, come on, come on, come on, come on, sir. I know. I know you got nice sparkling rims and and you got all of that. Come on now. But when was your last prostate exam? When was the last time you had a full physical? All right, so mental and physical, then spiritual, spiritual. And then area number four, emotional. Don't confuse emotions with mental. Although they work together, but how are you emotional? Are you emotionally well? Do you have some unresolved anger? You have some bitterness. You have some rage on the inside. You got some stuff, some offense that you need to, to handle. You need some stuff that you need to pay attention to because it's going to take you out of balance. And then number five, the fifth area that we're going to look at is socially. Are you socially balanced? Good God Almighty. Are you socially balanced? Do you have friends? Do you have a real life? Do you have a, a space? I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm not talking about, not, not, not talking about your husband and your wife and your boo and your poo. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about friends that just you. You talk to. You confide in. You have conversations with. Because even that getting all so, all so lovey-dovey with your spouse can still take you out of balance. Because you still ain't got no friends. You can't eat with nobody but each other. Come on, y'all not saying nothing to me. Are we in balance? Are we living in balance? You so busy pursuing your husband and your wife that you have neglected yourself. What about some self-care? Come on, what about a Sabbath? What about a vacation by yourself? Oh, I just can't go nowhere without my husband. And I can't go nowhere without my wife. I, that ain't balance. You was a you before y'all was a y'all. What happened to you? Where is you at? What you done done with you? What have you done with you? After you had the kids. You're a great mom, but you're a terrible you. You may be a good wife, a good husband, but you're not a good you. When's the last time you read a good book? Just sat in a corner by yourself, read a book, private time, personal time. Those, those are things. Those are things that we omit by, by the time your children get up and then you got grandchildren and now you got great grands and everybody's all on top of your head and you don't remember the last time you just sat down and ate an apple. Just sat down and had a cup of yogurt by yourself. Didn't have to share it. Didn't have to put the spoon in the baby's mouth and then back in your mouth. When was the last time you took care of you? I'm talking about social balance. Oh, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Are you operating at your peak performance? Are you operating in the middle? Or are you operating on, on the extreme ends? Every day is another extreme. Every moment is an extreme. Extreme on your job. Extreme at the house. Extreme at the church. Extreme here. Extreme there. Who are you? 
When was the last time you talked to you? When was the last time you had a good conversation with yourself and you could figure out where you was and you could take inventory of whether or not you were in balance or out of balance? Come on, folk. Let's get in balance this year. Let's find out. What is the middle? Am I caught in one end too long? Have I, have I grieved too long? Have I spent too much? Have I eaten too much? Oh, God, come on. It's all right. Let's get in balance. Don't beat yourself up and keep, keep doing it wrong. Get it right. That's the purpose of the Holy Ghost. The purpose of the Holy Ghost. Is to help us to operate at peak performance. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. That's the purpose of the Holy Ghost. Is to help you. Help me. Help us. To live in balance. You're making too many trips to the doctor. You're out of balance. You're out of balance. Your body is crying. Your body is, is aching for balance. And they're going to keep medicating you until they start operating on you. And then they're going to operate on you. And then they're going to cut off some things. And then they're going to amputate some things. All because you won't get in balance. All because you won't manage your eating or manage your blood pressure or manage your rest. You'd rather suffer at night than to just spend good money on a good mattress. You're out of balance. You'd rather save money and sleep hard and sleep bad than to go ahead and spend the money on a good night's rest. Oh, God, am I talking to somebody? Am I, am I bought it for the children. I bought it for the buy one for you. So you can be a better you. Get good pillows. Get good sheets. Hallelujah. Spend some money on something other than, 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 than 50 count sheets. Get you some 300 counts and 400 counts and 500 counts and 800 counts. Just, just one time, uh, invest in some good sheets. And, and, and so you can stress well and dream well and, and get up refreshed. Am I talking to anybody? Uh, you give all you have to a job. You give all you have to your family. Why don't you give yourself a good night's rest? Because we are so used to being out of balance that out of balance is normal. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. This is the gospel, folks. Go to the 10th chapter of John. Come on, come on. This is the gospel. I know, I know you ain't heard nothing about the cross. And you don't think this is the gospel. But this is the good news. This is the good news. That's what's wrong with you now. You know all the stories of the Bible. Uh, but you ain't read a good book in 20 years. Are all your readings spiritual? Or do you read anything to challenge your intellect so you can increase in wisdom? All your magazines junk? Or do you read anything of substance like Forbes? Do you read anything of substance where you can get a handle on something other than the garbage that is always fed to us through our culture? Do you have any opinions that are your own? Because you researched it yourself. John chapter number 10. Are you there? I'm trying. <laughs> If y'all knew what I go through. <laughs> Look at 10. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life. 
and that you may have it more abundantly. Would you mark that in your Bibles? Mark that in your Bibles. I have come that you might have life and that you might live it to the fullest, one translation says. That you might have balance and purpose. That you will live at an optimum level. And this is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to help us to live an optimum life to live in an optimum way so that we are never at a disadvantage or at the mercy of anything. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life, that you might have it at optimum, optimum, that you might have it in abundance. And he's not talking about your life after death. He's talking about your life in the earth. And you don't need the Holy Ghost in heaven. You need the Holy Ghost in the earth. The Holy Spirit has been given to us in our earth journey while we are earth bound to help us to live in the balance. And many of us die too soon, eat too much, stress too way too much. Come on, overthink everything. Second guess everything. Oh God, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. It's a wonder your brain don't just jump out of your mind and lay it down on the floor up underneath the bed and hide from you the way you overwork it. The way you overwork it, the way, the way you keep going back over and over and over again. The reason some of you can't get into a deep sleep is because your mind doesn't know how to rest. Ooh, am I talking to anybody? Did you know that your body at a certain time every day goes through a complete cleanse? Oh, come on now. Did you know that at a certain time of the night while you are resting that your, body, your organs began to purge? Ooh, that your organs began to cleanse themselves? That we are fearfully and wonderfully made? Come on now, that our, our organs, our liver at a certain time, our kidneys at a certain time. Come on now, even our brains, uh, even our bloodstream, uh, our cells. Uh, listen, because the body has got to stay in balance uh, if it's going to be disease free. So God has built within your body uh, a system called balance. It's called pH and if you will eat right and rest right and drink water come on now then you can stay in balance and you can stay disease free not too much acid not too much alkaline that your body the way God created us is that your body would remain in balance. And if it's disease, it's because you took it out of balance. You know how perfectly and wonderfully we are made? That we are made to live abundantly. We are created in the image and the likeness of God. We have been given intelligence. We have been given the ability to have logic and to make estimations, presumptions, perceptions that we can add, multiply, and subtract. And we can do all of these great things and cannot stay in balance. What is up with us? What has happened to us, God's people, that we are so spiritual minded, that we're no earthly good? You're so deep. Until whenever I see you, I want to go, ooh, ooh, because you're so spooky. Some of you have gone over the deep end. You have some chronic issues with reality you have chronic issues with reality and so you choose to live in an alternate reality that's what's happening around us right now we have never seen this since the civil war where one person will try to violate 
the democracy of our country and discredit the system of voting only to get their own way. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me the other day and said, now it's no longer about the person, but now it's about just being right and that they'll do anything for it to be said that they were right. It has nothing to do with America, has nothing to do with abortion, has nothing to do with anything else. Now we just want to be right. And so now we will discredit every other person. We will discredit any other system. We will discredit anybody that comes against the fact that we are right. And look how out of balance our our atmospheres are. Look at what has happened in the midst of a person who is out of balance being in the leadership and all of the people that they are able to garner. And I'm amazed at how many people that I'm talking to have taken this thing so serious that they are listening to prophets all day, which are not prophets. They're listening to people all day trying to prophesy, trying to trying to clean up the wrong prophecy, trying to, you know, but can I say this? The God that is in this Bible, if God said it, it will come to pass. He is so detailed. And if in fact God spoke it, why didn't you get all of it? Why do you get the details? Why do you get all of it? Because you did not hear from God. There's a time in the scripture where a prophet was prophesying and the Bible says, and God put a lying spirit in his mouth. And the true prophet that prophesied against what the lying prophets were saying or what the prophets were saying, that they thought he was wrong. And when they went back to check it, God had put a lying spirit in the mouth of the popular prophets so that the will of God could be done and the popular prophets could not destroy it. This thing has become so divisive now. Now it's so divisive. Now it's almost evil. You know why? It's out of balance. You, can't, you won't be able to, to get COVID under control until the culture gets back in balance. You won't be able to open up these schools until we get back in balance. You won't be able to go back to your jobs if we don't get back in balance. Look at the economy around us. It's shredding because we're out of balance. Everything that God has created is created to function at its optimum level in balance. So here's some things I want you to consider. Number one, I want you to take an honest inventory of yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I living this life abundant? Are there areas in my space that I need to pay attention to? Am I, am I really in balance here? Let me take an honest inventory. And if you really want an honest inventory, don't just inventory yourself. Ask someone who really likes you. Say, do you think I'm out of balance? If you really want to know, it, it, uh, tell me the areas that you think I need to bring into balance. Take an honest inventory. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to write a plan of action that will correct your areas of imbalance. And it's going to take you 12 months. Listen, these next 12 months are going to be your time of pursuing a balanced life. Pursuing a balanced life. Honest inventory, number one. And number two, you're going to write down a plan of action. What am I going to do to get these COVID 20 pounds off? How am I going to do it? What am I going to do? I know exactly what I've got to do. I know what I've got to cut out of my diet that I allowed in. I know what I have to go back to. I, I got out of balance. I, I got out of balance and I know what I got to do. I, I gave myself permission to, to eat comfort food. Because I was discomforted. And that's all right. It's a time to overeat. But then there's a time to fast. There's a time to stop. Don't beat yourself up because you did it. Come on, because remember both of God. 
Remember that both are God. So yes, I had a few too many M&Ms with peanuts. Yes, I sure enough did. Hallelujah. And some of you were kind enough to, to donate it. Well, don't donate that now because I'm coming back into balance. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Yes, I allowed myself to, to have some dressing and I allowed myself, come on now, to have some other things that, that were comforting to me. I couldn't see my children. I couldn't see my, my sisters. I can't see my family. Yes, it was a time to indulge. But now it's a time to refrain. Are you listening to me? See, that's the balance. That's the balance. It's not that I can't overindulge. But now I, I got to know when it's time to not get caught over there and get back over into the refraining. That's what keeps me in balance, folks. That there's a time. There are time. God gives everything in his time. But let me take an let me take an honest inventory. Let me ask number three, the help of the Holy Spirit. The help of the Holy Spirit to reveal and uncover areas that I am out of balance. To uncover areas that I am not glorifying Christ in. And then, um, finally, is Christ at the epicenter of my life? Is Christ at the epicenter of my life? Have I allowed anything or anyone, any trauma, any situation to become the epicenter of my life? I have to get back in balance. I have to get, I know, I, I was talking to one of my little girls from Niagara Falls and her beloved sister went home to be with the Lord the other day. And I, I looked at her post and I said, oh gosh, she's hurting in pain. And I, I had to stop it. I said, listen, I need you to live. There's a time to mourn. But I need you to live. I need you to watch what you're saying out of your mouth. I understand grief, but then there's good grief. I need you to have good grief. You see, we can so easily justify being out of balance. We can so easily justify not operating at our peak performance. Look at your times. Look at how you schedule your day. Look at what it is that's stealing away and robbing you of your peak performance. Lord, I want to be in balance. I don't want to be in any space I'm not supposed to be in. Mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, or socially. I ask you now, Lord, to open the eyes of my understanding. To help me to see where I personally am not operating in balance now Holy Spirit I thank you I give you permission and I give you the right of way to help me to align myself in balance if I see a space of frustration if I see a place of fatigue if I'm not increasing in wisdom in stature and favor with God I thank you that this is my time, my season to be a better me, to be a better me, to be the best me that I can be. And I thank you, Lord, that you will be glorified. You will be glorified. You have given us dominion over the works of your hands. You have put under our feet all things. So now, God, we thank you that you will forgive us for any area that we are not paying attention to, any area that we are neglecting, any area that we keep pacifying, or any area that we are procrastinating. If it's our heart that needs to be healed, if it's our minds, if our social life, if, if, our, if our financial life, wherever we are out of balance, Lord, forgive us. And thank you for the Holy Spirit 
that will know all things and reveal all things to us. And this is our greatest year of pursuing the balanced life. We thank you and give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people said, amen. Come on, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come on, can you clap your hands for that word? Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God glory. Remember that the unexamined life is not worth living. We must examine ourselves to see where we are in the faith. Come on now. We have to manage. We have to identify our addictions. We have to identify our offenses. We have to identify the areas in our hearts that still are bruised. And I pray that you who are watching today, that you will take this journey with us here at the Holy Ghost Cathedral, 1745 East Grand Boulevard, Detroit, Michigan, 48211. That you will join us here on Sundays in our virtual sanctuary. And that you will join us Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Facebook Live on Zoom and other opportunities. Everything that you can do this year to pursue the balanced life I want you to know that God is going to help you all you got to do is want to all you got to do is ask him help me Holy Spirit whether it's anger temper whether it's a habit whether it's an addiction whether it's choices lifestyles whatever it is all oh, that we would live the balanced life and this is why Jesus came Jesus came that we can live the life of abundance. And abundance is not just wealth or money, but abundance is balance. Hallelujah. Abundance is optimum living at my peak performance, whatever that is. And we may not all have the same assignments. We may not all have the same giftings and talents, but we all can pursue balance. Thank you, Father. We all can pursue a balanced life. And I want you to say this out of your mouth. I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to organize my closets. I'm going to organize my house. I'm going to organize my drawers. I'm going to organize the things that are disorganized. I'm going to organize my finances. I'm going to organize my finances. I'm going to organize my finances. I'm going to stop begging the government and thank God for every little 600 or 500 or 2,000 that you get. But if you got bad habits, it's just going to be another minute before you need another stimulus check. I'm going to balance my finances. I'm going to balance my appetites, my, my, my impromptu buying. I'm going to manage me better so that I can be at my peak performance. How many of you want God to use you? How many of you want the Spirit of the Lord to use you to make a difference in your generation? Then you're going to have to live in balance, folks. You got to know what to pick up and what to let go. Some of you have books that are unfinished because you, you're out of balance. You, 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 there's some things that you are putting on top of that. So you got to move some things around. Am I talking to anybody? You, those of you that have a serious problem with procrastination, I'm talking to you. There's nothing that can drive you out of balance quicker than always procrastinating. Oh, I'm going to do it. 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 And you still haven't done it. You said I'm going to do it 20 times and you still haven't done it. You know why? Something is out of balance our emotions you said you wasn't gonna get mad about that anymore you said that wasn't gonna bother you ever again and you let it you allowed it something is out of balance my friends but God wants us at our optimum best God wants us at our peak performance and he has given us Holy Spirit to help us while we're earthbound 
love y'all. I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Let's stand up and worship the Lord right there. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. I need you to worship. I need you to digest this. Hallelujah. 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 I hear in the spirit somebody say, well, I'm trying to build my business. Yes, you're trying to build your business, but you've neglected your spiritual life. You're Come on, come on, come on. We worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. Forgive us of our trespasses. Forgive us of our sins, oh God. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. Help us, O oh Shakabahaya. Help us, God. Help us, O oh God. Some of you, you have really wonderful gifts and talents, but you don't really prepare as you should. You don't invest in practice. You don't really invest. You're not investing in time. You're not investing in scheduling and preparing because other things have you out of balance. And it's been the Lord's mercy that has kept you from embarrassment. It's been the Lord's kindness that has kept you from embarrassment. It's been the Lord's kindness that has kept you from looking foolish. But you can spend more time in preparation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't rely just on your gift. Don't just rely because you think you can, 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 can nail it at the last minute, but you don't put anything in it. It's going to begin to unravel soon. It's going to begin to unravel. You got to, you got to get in balance. You got to get in balance. You got to get in balance. Come on and worship God. I feel His presence. I feel the Holy Spirit in a powerful way. Come on. Hallelujah. He's in the midst of us like a chiropractor. He's here to make adjustments. Oh, na Sometimes you think it's your leg that's hurting. Sometimes you think it's your, your ankle that's hurting, but it's really your back is, is out of alignment. Headaches, sinuses, and all of those things. And you're medicating the headache, but the real problem is you need an adjustment. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, I'm here to make adjustments. This is going to be the year of adjustments. This is going to be the month of adjustments. I know. Oh, God, we bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. I hear the Lord say, don't doubt me. Don't doubt me. Ask me to help you. Ask me to help you. To bring your life your thoughts, your emotions, your, your appetites, your desires. Ask me to help you bring them in balance. Hallelujah, Jesus. I hear the Lord say, even in this time, your prayer times, all of your time, your devotional time, your devotional life coming back into balance coming back into alignment where you can be your optimal, you can be your best. Thank you, Father. Don't excuse yourself when you're not your best. 
Don't just say, well, that's over. Okay, it wasn't my best. Uh-uh, don't excuse yourself. Go back and perfect it. Go back and perfect that. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on, lift your hands. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is right there in your home, right there. Hallelujah. He who has begun a good work in you, he shall perform it. He shall perform it, but you gotta come on, let's work with it. Let's work with him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't get comfortable in your imbalance. Oh God, yes, God. Hallelujah. Don't make everything fit your imbalance. Pay attention to it. Oh God. Put attention on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop. Stop. Just say, oh, well, it's nothing. It is. It's something. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We speak to everything in the atmosphere that triggers our imbalance. We speak to anything now, everything now in our culture, in our homes, around us, on our jobs that causes us to get out of balance in the name of Jesus. Father, help us to be alert. Help us to be alert, to be responsive in a quicker way to those things that cause us to spend days weeks and months out of balance oh god oh come let us adore him i hear this oh come let us adore him come on let's do it oh come let us adore Lord, 
spiritually, physically, financially. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. Spiritually. All the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You are Christ. Yes, sir. Christ. You're Christ the Lord. You deserve my best. You deserve my optimum. You deserve my peak performance. Hallelujah. And we seal this word. in which we've heard hallelujah we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor we give you all the praise the majesty oh God because you are Christ you are Christ you are the Lord and we make a covenant with the word we just heard that we will yes, pursue the balance. This Thank is his body Lord. broken for us. We take it now and eat. Oh, come. Let us adore him. Oh, come. Let us. Let us adore him with our lives. With our balance. Let us, let us do a better job of adoring him with everything that's in us. He is Christ. He is Christ. And he's the Lord. And this he said is my blood. We covenant now with the word that we've just heard. That this is our season of balance. This is our season to live a balanced life mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally, and socially. Father, we know that we may not be at that moment right here, but we heard the word. We heard the word. We didn't just listen. We heard the word. And the word found us wanting. The word found us lacking. But we thank you for the blood. The blood that prevails over our weaknesses. The blood that prevails over our shortcomings. The blood that prevails over our liabilities and our excuses. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the power that's in this blood. And we take it now in covenant to the word that we've just received in Jesus' name. Come let us adore him. Oh, come let us, come on, sing it. Adore him. Sing it loud, church. Oh, come, let us adore. 
Would you sow a $21 seed today? Would you sow a $21 seed in addition to your giving? Would you sow an extra $21 seed this morning? Praise God, our first Sunday in the year. If you didn't get it done on New Year's Eve, just stay right there with Oh Come. If you didn't get it done on New Year's Eve, then let's do it. And if you did it, then you can do it again. Praise God. Amen. I want you to put that aside every Sunday this month. A $21 seed. A $21 seed. Those of you that are giving online. Cash app. Dollar sign. HGFG. Cathedral. Let's do it now. A $21 seed. Oh, yes. Oh, come. Oh, come. All ye faithful. Let's do it. Let us. A $21 seed in addition. Over and above your tithes and offering every Sunday this month. Those of you that are watching, I'm talking to you too. Those of you that have joined us by Facebook, by YouTube, I want you to sow a $21 seed. He is Christ. He's Christ. And He's the Lord. Ooh, uh, we bring you. A $21 seed. All the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. We bring you coal and frankincense and myrrh. We bring you our best gifts. We bring you our sacrifice. Oh, we bring you our lives. We bring you our bodies. We bring you our minds. We bring you our finances. We bring you all of our habits. Ooh, you are Christ. You are Christ, and you're the Lord. Oh, come, come on. Oh, come. Let, as we get ready to go, let us adore him. Oh, come. Let us, let us, so that $21 seed, adore him. Oh, come, yes, sir. Bring him all your best. Bring him your best. Adore, adore him. He is Christ. He is Christ. Oh, he's the Lord. Come on, one more time as we get ready to go. Oh, come, let us. Spiritually, financially, emotionally, socially, adore him. Yes. Oh, come. Let us, let us, let us adore him. Yeah. Hey, he is Christ. Come on. He is Christ. He is Christ. He is Christ, Christ, and He is the Lord. Father, we thank you as we leave this place. Stay with that song right there. Listen, I bless your lives. I send blessings to you. I send blessings and favor to you in the name of Jesus. That this is going to be your best year yet throw 2020 away and pick up 21 and let's run this race with haste let's make haste pick it up let 2020 go whatever it was it was a time to keep and a time to throw away 
now let the blood of Jesus be traction to your tires. Let the angels of the Lord go before you and the great hosts of heaven come behind you and be your rear guard. That the spirit of the Lord will keep you fire by day, cloud by night. That you'll always know his presence. You'll always know that you're surrounded by God. And wherever you are, God is. That he keep you from accidents and incidents this week. That he protects you. You're rising. You're lying down. You're in. You're out. Wherever you are, that you are covered. That he cover your mind from the attack of witches and warlocks and mobile demons. But this will be a great week. To start off a great month. To start off a great year. Because this is the year that you will know for sure that you got in balance. And when you arrive to your homes and your destinations today, that there will be no hurt, harm, or danger. That the angels kept a watch over your property. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now you go in peace. Now you go in the shalom of God. Now you go in the wellness of the Holy Spirit. Until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name. And the peace of the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it. Hallelujah. Oh, come. God bless you. Make sure you put that $21 seed in the ground. Adore him. Hallelujah. Oh, come. Yes, sir. Join me tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. is with you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. Pentecost in a pandemic is a movement. Pentecost in a pandemic is a necessity. Pentecost in a pandemic is an operation of the Holy Spirit to bring us, the people of God, 
back to the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, I'm Bishop Carletta Vaughn, and I want you to join me as we get ready to move into day 81 of Pentecost in a pandemic, School of the Holy Spirit, taking you into the deeper places of God, the Holy Ghost. Listen, you need this. <laughs> yes, you do. Do you want it? Do you know you need it? Listen, there are streams of light that's just waiting for you to come inside. So join me Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern. Facebook Live, IG, Zoom. I'm everywhere. I just need you to come with me. I'll see you in the morning, 7 a.m. Don't miss it. Change.